Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, into the Nexus Gaming series, and we find ourselves here in Division D Northeast. On the left-hand side, we've got the members of Wait Till 10, Iceman on the Falstead, J-Mac going to be on the Imperius, Hannibal will be on the Tassadar, Ronan on the Joanna, and Lady Ronan on the Brightwing. Over on the right-hand side, we've got the members of Council of War. Night Knight will be on the Kael'thas. Red Face Four, Beast is going to be on that Grey Mane. Uh, Ender is going to be on the Anubarak. We will be seeing Alt, uh, Ultimate Hook is going to be on that uh, Lucio. And Erzosa, I think is how you say it, is going to be on the Sonya. Let's go ahead and check out those level ones and see what our first engagement potentially could look like. Simple cosplay. I bought a new rifle for a thousand yard precision and, and need to mow. Uh... And now you need to kit it out. Oh, got you, got you, got you. Fancy, 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 fancy. Enjoy. All right, Red Face is going to take a bit of damage at the start, but oh, almost going down right there. Tacit are going to build a few stacks on that level one questing talent static charge. Joanna still holding their level one. Curious to see what they're going to go for. It's Laws of Hope. Technically, you're missing out on at least one regeneration globe. Zealous Glare would be good into the gray main. You get the double blind. You get a little more poke and delay for the objective phase. We'll have to see what that Joanna is going to go for, and we'll keep you up to date on some of those other questing numbers, much like the false with his uh, frequent flyer at level one, Kael'thas with his Mana Addict. Excuse me. Yeah, Mana Addict. Yeah. Sorry. I always like, for a second, I was like, Fingers of Frost. I'm like, that's Jaina, Chris. Don't do that. <laughs> Impale from Ender, but he's actually taking a lot of damage. Is this a potential kill? No, it's going to be not enough. And Joanna still holding that level one, waiting to see what they're going to prioritize right now. Iceman in bottom lane continuing to uh, hold against, I'm assuming, the Sonya that they can see now that she's in lane. There is also this rotation from the Falstad up, so it's going to be for this Bruiser Camp. Once you get this Bruiser Camp, they're going to rotate up and grab the Siege Giant Camp, which will pair nicely with the timing on the objective phase. That way you have the Siege Giants pushing a lane that is op opposing this objective phase being in bottom lane. Imperius actually trying to match into Sonya. She's going to go ahead and get vision really quickly. No, she's not, because actually if she got that vision, would have signified that she's on this camp on the right-hand side, so not grabbing that's actually a benefit. As Falstead throws a hammering out, trying to poke at the wave, Ender taking a lot of damage, is going to be getting... I was waiting for the impale from J-Mac, because I knew it was being lined up. Ronin is going to be very low right now. Did go into that Laws of Hope, so missed out on a few regeneration globes. We'll see if that bites them in the butt in the end, or if that really even matters. Top lane, Night Knight, still continuing to siege up. Kael'thas does actually have moderately good siege with that living bomb as well as the flame strike, but did he stay too far forward for too long? No, because Ronin doesn't have enough for a kill, and our first objective phase is up and available. I had mentioned that siege giant can't be grabbed beforehand, and Hannibal isn't going to be able to have the quickest clear onto this as he's uh, autoing and st uh, stutter stepping, if you will, just to get rid, or not get rid, so they won't take damage from the siege giants and Brightwing. We've seen this from level one, but we haven't talked about it. Pixie Charm. Passive. Gain one stack of bribe when an enemy, when a nearby enemy minion dies, and five stacks when hitting an enemy hero with Arcane Flare Center, maximum 80 stacks, and you use 20 stacks per minion bribed. Did you see what Ender was doing right there while we were in that talent tier? They saw the Falstead was going for the flight, tried to utilize the Impale, or excuse me, the Burrow Charge to mitigate the flight and put that on full cooldown, but Ronin gets delayed out by Hook. Okay, Ronin going for the channel. Doesn't look like there's going to be uh, any contest over this. And mostly also being that I'm realizing this now, Greymane, Kael'thas still up in the top lane, clearing things out. So not prioritizing that first objective phase and just continuing to siege up as best they can, pulling that experience for the friendly side. Over in the bottom lane, just peeking around, see what's going on. We have this uh, bright wing Tassadar trying to put pressure down here as Tassadar still building out those stacks. Is going to be able to poke at the Sony as well as these structures. Lucio hanging around the top, looking to maybe speed boost in. Not going to be able to find any sort of angle onto that. As J-Mac rotates into top lane. Oh, but he's going to be stalled out from mounting up by the beetle. And that also will give vision to Night Knights to know. All right. Uh, they got two members floating around on top. Not going to be playing too aggressive right now. All right. Tassadar with a, just a little bit of poke here as well. Nubrek has a burrow charge. Going to be able to connect onto Hannibal. Slam, polymorph, or no, polymorph, excuse me. 
phase shift comes through from or won't come through from Brightwing. Sorry, I saw, I completely misread what the the little bop from the Lucio has just polymorph. I don't know how I saw it that way. Either way, second objective phase is up and available with the Tassler down for eight seconds. Will this be contested by the side of Wait Till Ten? Ultimate hook, trying to get some pressure on. False step barrel rolls through, throws the hammering out just to poke on to Ender. This is pretty standard auto attack build for the Falstead. Frequent flyer, hammer gain, secret weapon. Looking to see if there's anything really out of the ordinary. We do have subterranean shield. Burrow charge also grants uh, a scaling 472 point shield for five seconds. Good to kind of get into that back line and mitigate some of the burst and a little bit of the sustain, if you will, from the enemy side. But another impale combo into Hannibal. Spear will not connect from the Sonya, but the spear from J-Mac will connect into the enemy side. But this Imperius is all on his own. Iceman trying to find the damage into Redface, and that is going to be a kill over to the side of Wait Till 10. Hannibal looking for another fa uh, Shock Ray. And he's going to be able to poke at the enemy side. Face from Brightwing will connect onto this Imperius. Force wall behind the Kael'thas. He is going to go down. No convection stacks to be lost as this is a mana at a Kael'thas. Second objective of the game. Going over to the side of our Wait Till 10 crew. And they'll easily be able to grab this boss. Let's go ahead and talk about some other numbers right now. We've, we have some damage, healing, and experience that we can discuss while we look at this boss to be grabbed. Imperius, big surprise, has some of the highest heroic damage in the game, but Falstead, not too far behind, about 200 or so, actually less than 200 damage from the Falstead behind, so still Falstead doing a great job of just sustained damage into the enemy side, but Imperius has had some pretty impactful spears into those backline members. My favorite thing about watching the cast of game is seeing all the XP uh, sparkles uh, that go uncollected. <laughs> There's a lot, there's a lot to be gained from, from just missing, from Miss Soak. I mean, look at this top lane right now. This is, uh, there's, there's a couple full experiences, but a lot of 25% experiences coming up and J-Mac will grab a few of those. 10 talents here was gained already by the side of Wait Till 10. And Brightwing will go into the Emerald Winds and with Brightwing doing that, we'll see Falstead going Hinterland's Blast. Okay, Hinterland's Blast, Falstead. Bottom lane fork goes down, Falstead flies over to the top lane, uh, see giant camp while our third objective of the game is spawning i feel like falstead this is a little this is a little too late to go for this but they really want to be able to have that camp imperious brightwing still dealing with the boss on top and i feel like you gotta let this go you gotta go for the objective or maybe i am just too gung-ho about getting a third objective getting that curse maybe you just wait get into a better position shielder from joanna didn't stall out or it was a little too early no way to uh, stall out night night right now and this is going to be an easy channel for night night Falstead did get that camp, but I feel like if he was here, he'd be able to poke out. There's going to be a number one win from the Brightwing. There will be a Falling Sword as well from the Joanna. Huge Hinterlands Blast comes out as well, getting a massive amount of cooldown reduction. And it is going to be 25 seconds of cooldown, but a phase shift from Brightwing won't be quick enough. And that is going to be Falstead going down. And Sonya is able to sprint away. Top lane fort did go down to the side of that boss for Council of War. Now quickly, it's 120 second cooldown, right? Yeah, 120 seconds and you get 30 seconds off from each enemy hit by the Hangelin's Blast. So that was a 90 second cooldown, if I'm not mistaken, which means there was three enemy heroes hit by said Hangelin's. I can do basic math. Look at me, chat. Look at me go. Waiting to see if there was a plane to Sonya, but she's, she's tiptoeing around this top lane very well. Another curse potential for the side of our blue team. Let's jump onto that red vision really quickly and see what they're seeing as they need to play into this. No 13 talents here advantage to the enemy side. Iceman looking for the channel right now. Waiting to see if anyone steps in. No channel, but there's going to be a burrow combo in from a new brack. This is a lot of damage going out. Phoenix from the Kael'thas is there as well. Any cocoons to be had? Doesn't look like it will be uh, utilized just yet. Falstead Hinterland sets up a kill. And oh my god, the cooldown reduction on that first one was enough to get a second one immediately. And this is going to be a triple kill overall in favor for the side of Wait Till 10. Well played. And here comes the objective phase in this blue team favor. Imperius moves into mid lane to clear out the camp, and there's a fast rotation from the Tassadar Joanna into the top lane to confirm a fort. Falstead, considering what to do, he's going to join into the friendly team as bottom lane's already pushed in quite heavily, and the siege from Falstead would be very helpful, as well as he'd be able to get a few extra quick frequent flyer stacks as he's at 18 right now. Looking around the map right now just to see what's, uh, what's being lost and gained. 
A lot, a lot, obviously, for the side of uh, wait till 10. Sonya trying to push back bottom lane a little bit. Ronin checks the bush, but the entire team is fighting over through this mid lane on the far side of the fort. Falling sword from the Joanna does give unstoppable, but it's looking at uh, this this Lucio who's going to be able to skate away. Phoenix from the Kale Faust just comes out after being, I believe, immediately on cooldown. There was the... Wow, that's just rude. But either way, there's going to be the angelic armament from this Imperius finding a little damage in the kill foss. There was the hammering plus the hinterlands to confirm the kill. So you get one set of cooldown onto that hinterlands, but you also confirm the kill onto kill foss and a fort, a well-played objective phase for the side of wait till 10. Waiting very patiently in their decisions as Falstead flies to grab the camp on the left-hand side, but he's not going to be able to do this all on his own. Going to need a little bit of help. Actually, no, he's, he's auto attack build. He should be fine, actually, if he just activates that tailwind. Don't don't forget, he's got that hammer gain, so the any basic attack damage he's doing, which can be scaled up by throwing your secret weapon out, which can be scaled up by activating your frequent flyer, that's all hammer gains value, so it's a lot more, uh, it's a lot easier to go for these larger camps on your own as a false stat player when you go this build. We also will be seeing the sustained wins. This is basically the giant killer for the false stat. Into Sonya Nubarak, this is going to chunk quite heavily. Sonya, speaking of, is going to be in bottom lane pushing things out. She does have Wrath of Berserker. I don't think it's active right now. No, you'd be seeing a glow around her swords as well as you just see that little purple bar, bar underneath her name. So a 16's looming in favor for the side of wait till 10. Let's go ahead and continue. Continue to wait and see if they can dominate this map. Because right now it's been a dominant play in the latter half for wait till 10. There's been some good moments in the beginning as well. And we could have seen Console of War starting to turn things around, but it's just not working out at the time being. Boss just now respawning in bottom, and Boss in top lane is 20 seconds away roughly, so this could be double Boss. And these lanes are already also pushed out. I mean, mid lane, camp already pushing in. Top lane, Siege Giants plus Catapult pressure. Objective phase will be to the right of this boss, and it hasn't been announced yet, but it's probably not far off from being announced, as this is, uh, it's been quite a bit of time since the objective phase did end. Falstead well, with the flight. I think we're seeing some pings to go boss immediately. And he's checking to see if the enemy team's on this already. He's actually not showing in the bush whatsoever. There's no uh, little icon underneath his name. Am I done? Wait, hold on. Am I wrong on that? Maybe it just doesn't show. Oh, no. he. No, he's not in the bush. Iceman isn't even in the bush. <laughs> Hannibal and Ronin are because there's no, there's no eye underneath. It's, it's, <laughs> if the enemy team showed up, he would have just been like hanging out. Like it's just like one giant wing is just floating outside of the of the bush right now. Casting a tournament, woo! Thanks, Baja. Uh, it's uh, we're just casting the Nexus Gaming Series, which is just a it's a it's a North American league. I guess you could say it's a tournament in a sense, though, because they do have a playoff and everything like that. We're what we, we're in right now. What would be like the round robin stage? On the train home from a party, enjoying the stream. Oh, thank you so much, Ark. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the tier one for five months. I'll resend your alert when we get out of game. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Always glad to uh, cast some games for you all. Very, very much the highlight of my day. And then I'm gonna make. Go, I'm gonna go make chicken after all of this. I still have to discuss with all of you what what I should make. I'm I'm like very. For some reason, I'm like very much in the mood to try to like make grilled chicken. I don't know why, but I'm like that's where I'm at. So maybe I just like do a marinade and, and just do that after after stream tonight. But we got a while to go. This is gonna be a long stream day because I haven't streamed in nine days and I'm getting back into it. Plus we got that 18 hour stream. That's Subathon. Subathon's coming up this Friday. You can check out the link which has all of the games localized to your time zone. If you click on that link for the Bahamathon, it localizes all the stream times to your time zone. And I have like I have like a I have like a live split thing that speedrunners use to keep track of like time and everything like that. So if you'd like to check it out, I highly encourage it. And uh, yeah, I hope you all come by on Friday for that subathon. Really, really excited. A little bit nervous, but always, always more excited than nervous. Let's check out some of the other numbers as we haven't had a chance to look at them in the later half of the game. Nice and pale through the wall from Ender to check if Ronin or anyone was in that bush like that just decision right there, because this right now is the vision. Falstead may be showing a little bit or maybe wasn't showing at the time, but just little things like that make big differences. Falstead actually overtaking the Imperius now in heroic damage by about 4,000. And that, uh, that that auto attack build Falstead's doing pretty good. Wrath of Berserker gonna be popped by the Sonya. Oh my god, she's gonna try and live, but it ain't working out. Emra wins from the Brightwing comes through, and I think it actually is a little anti-synergistic with the Falstead as it misses one of the heroes, but they still find a quad kill overall. Make it a pentakill. 
in favor for the side of wait till 10 with 30 seconds on average and the curse to channel. Well, no, actually, no, it's a curse advantage. They're going to run on the side of uh, wait till 10. They're going to go for keep through top, but is this enough to end the game? Can they go for end? Well, the death timers are long enough. This keeps falling quite rapidly. I don't even think there's going to be a respawn in time, especially with this Falstead with his auto attack base build. There's, yeah, the keep going down in top lane. The core is going to start losing a little bit of its HP. And uh, this is looking like it is going to be a game number one going over the side of wait till 10. Some respawns are happening, so maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe this game is not over just yet. Falstead being split from the friendly side. He has a lot of the damage, but so is Imperius and Tassadar. J-Mac will go down. Tassadar taking a lot of damage here. There's going to be a falling sword from the Joanna. There's 13% left on this core. 12 is falling rapidly. Can Ronin live here? No. Falstead comes in with the last little bit of damage. Will he be able to do so? He needs one hammering. He needs one hammering, and that is going to be it. Falstead with 30 HP will be able to take game number one for the friendly team. GG, well played. That was a close one, chat. Oh my god. What are that was a close end. All right, let's look at talents. Exciting game for sure. Got away in the end, though. Oh, it did, yeah. Almost had that defense. I have to say, I don't see a lot of Hinterland Blast Falsteads. This was really good. Iceman has a really good Hinterland Blast Falstead. We also did say they had the little donut rings or the onion rings around them, so they do have those uh, prestige rings, if you will. Ah, that's, a, that's a nice way to call them, prestige rings. I think it's... What do they call them, actually? What is it? What is it? Someone knows, someone in chat knows the name. What are the rings called underneath your hero? Prestige rings, I think, sounds way cooler. Unless they're already called that, and I'm just pre-associating it. In. Mastery rings. Yes, Toku. Yes, yes, mastery rings. Uh, prestige rings sounds cooler. Also, because they didn't do the master ring thing that they promised us. <sighs> Mass buttery rings. All right, that's got to go in best of butt spot. That's that's definitely a best of butt spot moment right there. Let me uh, go over to this channel. Oh, it didn't copy. That's the Totski 420. I don't know why, but I went into Totski's Discord and just spam that and left. Two, three. Those mass buttery rings. Oh, mass buttery. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, pork chop. I was just saying, I was like, mm, buttery rings. That, I, that that sounds delicious, I think. I think. All right. Uh, wait till 10 wins game number one. Let's get our next map loaded up, ladies and gentlemen. We'll do another Twitch poll after this. Uh, we'll do another Twitch poll and figure out what you all want to what you all want to watch. I've got a Division A game, but we could jump around to something else. I'll, I'll put up like a C or a B or something like that, too. Trying to jump around as much as I possibly can today. All right, so the drafts, excuse me, the teams are on the correct sides, right? That's that, that's that, that's that, that's that. Hell yeah. All right. Well, I don't wanna, I don't wanna make you all wait too long. I'd say bounce back and forth. Yeah, maybe we just maybe just go to uh, maybe we just go to Division A. Something changed. Is it the beard cut? Because it can't be the hair. What do you mean something's changed? I have I have more tan. I I did sit out in the sun a little bit more. Uh, but no, my beard hasn't changed. I mean, I trimmed it a little bit today, but not much. I trimmed it a little bit before the vacation, but not much. Just just my normal amount of like just general management. You look different. No offense. That's okay. All the offense taken. 
Well, time to start banning people. You must die. <laughs> no, you're okay. You're okay. I've been gone for nine days. I probably look weird to everybody. I just realized the Heroes of Storm music wasn't on. Whoopsie. So it's just me quietly or just silently talking to you all. Uh, Bandit Pets, we can do that. Let's do that right before we get into the game. And then we'll get into the game, okay? We'll do some Bandit Pets, and we will then cast some Heroes of the Storm. All right. Let's get this in. Because he's he's such a good boy. He's a good I don't get it. Better explain it uh, in antagonizing detail. Okay, so what it is is it's 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 a bottle of it's a dog toy that's supposed to be referencing Bacardi, but since it's Halloween themed, it's Bucardi. Does that make more? Because <laughs> overexplaining a joke never kills a joke. He's such a good boy. He's such a good. Boy. I missed him so much. Like. Uh, my buddy has three dogs, and I love them all to death. Balin, Victor Victorian, Asha, they're all adorable. They're cute puppies. But my boy, my boy is just perfect in comparison. <laughs> I'm biased because he's my dog. All right, let's start the, uh, let's do the full open, and I'll see you in game number two of uh, Wait Till 10 versus Council of War in the Division D Northeast. See you in a second. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Nexus Gaming Series Division D Northeast. On the left-hand side, with the advantage in the series, it's going to be Wait Till 10. On this Tomb of Spider Queen map, we're going to have J-Mac on the Imperius. Hannibal will be on the big boy Asmodan. Lady Ronin on the Ariel. Ronin will be on the uh, New Brack and Iceman on the Greymane. Over on the right-hand side, we're looking at the members of Council of War, trying to take us to a game number three through Tomb of the Spider Queen. Ender's going to be on the... Blaze will be seeing Red Face Beast onto this Sylvanas. Five, Ultimate Hook is going to be on the three. Rhaegar. Night Knight will be on the Jaina. And Diva to be played by Irizosa. I think that's how you say their name, or at least I murdered it horribly. Let's get into it and see what happens here in Tomb. Will we head to a map number three? I love Bandit, by the way. I lost my mini bike race, but I was the oldest one there, so that's my story. Hey! To me, you won, all right? Let's just tell chat. We're just gonna tell chat that you won instead. You won first place. Everyone was like, damn, Nancy, that's some good mini biking. And there was a giant trophy and everyone had to make barbecue for you for dinner, right? Something like that? <laughs> Did you guys just have like, uh, was it like a course that you had or were there some like jumps and like rollers? And stuff? Not jumps, but you know what I mean? Like, were there some like rollers and some like uphill, downhill? Or was it just kind of like a flat track that you had to like just go around? Oh my god, Nancy, congratulations! Chat, Nancy won first place! Oh my god, Nancy. I hope all of your family is just red in the face embarrassed. Damn, Na see? <laughs> I'm, I'm so proud of you, Nancy. Congratulations. <laughs> 
Uh, oh, I forgot to send the resubscription. I'm so sorry. I just forgot to resend the subscription after that last game. But Ace, I will resend your, your subscription after that that last one. Sorry about that. I completely splanked. My acres have up and down, so it's a natural. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's awesome. That actually sounds like a blast, though. So we're all going to Nancy's for a dirt bike race. It'll take place on uh, February 31st, 2069. Uh, Nancy, thank you for the gifted sub. I will resend the alert when we get out of game. Thank you for gifting a sub to be crazy. <laughs> all right. As always, uh, as always, whenever I stream, we're three and a half hours in. We're gonna just gonna start getting super tangent heavy. As always, why not? So let's uh, let's see what's happening here in this bottom lane. Is this is going to be two siege giants cleared out by the side of uh, wait till ten. Diva is uh, doing her best just in this bottom lane to continue to pick up gems. Both teams are actually equal when it comes to the amount of gems picked up so far. Asmodan scaling quite heavily with his level 1 already, as well as his baseline at 54 out of the 200 for the level 1, or 54 out of the 400 for the baseline. Still, that uh, globe of uh, greed... No, that's gluttony. The gluttony globe will give you cooldown reduction uh, by 0.25 and double that, so it's 0.5 for enemy heroes hit. So a big wave plus a lot of enemy heroes can give you almost a full reset on your dunk, which is really, really... It's nice for a team fight. We could see this be a uh, Tide Sin or a Black Pool. I always mix up the two, level 10 and 20. But either way, we could see that uh, the dunk amplification at level 10 if they're going for this gluttony. So that way they can dunk, gluttony, or excuse me, they can dunk, trigger their heroic, dunk again, get a lot of value out of that. Or reverse that, actually. You could go for the uh, empowered dunk than the secondary. Either way, Nubrak goes in for a burrow charge. No, uh, no, Hannibal will go down right there, and that's going to be the first kill for the side of Council of War, already having that initial kill into one enemy member earlier on. Ender gets a huge jet propulsion. Greymane, excuse me, Rhaegar goes in for the bite butt. I heard, I heard, uh, uh, I saw a dive and a, like a sort of a, a growl I heard in my headphones. So I was like, oh, Greymane, wait a minute. There's a Rhaegar on the opposing side. Asmodan being pinged because uh, I'm assuming toxicity. No, I'm just kidding. All right, time for me to head out. Gonna, uh, For some reason, my family expects me to come over and celebrate my grandfather's 90th birthday. Well, I hope you have fun. I hope you have fun, my friend. Thank you for coming by. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow casting more games. And I'll be back on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for our normal stream stuff, except for Friday where it's the subathon. I hope to see you soon in Forum, and I hope you have a wonderful day, bud. You had a wonderful time. That, see, that's nice. Yeah, ooh, ooh, Night Knight. Ooh, that's not nice. Night Knight's gonna get picked off right there. Another kill over to the side of Wait Till 10. Over in the bottom lane, Diva just doing Diva things, just 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 firing at will firing away <laughs> just blowing down this tower so quickly i love i love it so much like i don't know if you've ever played diva when you have like no one really kind of pressuring you in a lane this is like one of those it's so great to be able to do this mecha explosion does give a little siege damage diva pilot form does have uh, even faster damage per second output so that's going to be able to take down one tower and diva doing a really good job of controlling that bottom lane here's also doing a phenomenal job on this hero but did they overextend the boost is going to be just fine to get diva away as you have the initial speed of boost Excuse me, the hit to the night hit the nitrous value, but you also have the rushdown value as well. So you have, I believe it deals uh is not isn't this a stun? I always forget these two. Two Booster stun. Okay, no, it's not hit the nitrous. I always mix up uh rushdown and hit the nitrous for which one stuns. Speaking of stuns, Ariel found a nice uh the tame and strike into the wall. Red face beast is able to get the haunting wave away, and web weavers will descend in favor for the side of wait till ten. We haven't cycled through the other numbers yet, so let's go ahead and do that and check out what's happening so far with said numbers. Also, on the note of numbers, we have a lot of numbers with this command in Twitch chat, as you have your information for the next Baja Ross, August twenty eighth. We are going to do another Baja Ross raffle. If we hit three hundred subs, we'll do another Baja Ross raffle. I have one planned for November, December, but we'll do a we'll do an earlier one if we hit that 300 sub mount. Count. Blah. Words. So Asmodan is going to laser his way through this mid lane tower. Top lane still has a very healthy web weaver putting that death wave out, and this is going to be amplifying the siege quite heavily. Bottom lane, J Mac and uh, Irizosa are doing 
they're fine actually. They're doing pretty pretty well into each other. The the Divas sustained damage and siege is going pretty well, but J Mac isn't really losing the lane hard by any means. We have a couple of talents. I want actually want to look and see what the Imperius build is because I didn't take a look at it. I think he's that holy fever 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 fever. How do you pronounce that? Is it fever? It's it's like phonetically it's pronounced it's it's spelled like fever for me I think. Not for me, but I think it's spelled that way. Anyways, we'll look at it in a second. 69 very nice gems. No. Oh, it's gone. I was going to say 69 very nice gems for the Council of War, but they... Uh, fervor. Oh, fervor. Fervor. Thank you. Chess Looter of all people would definitely know the pronunciation of that one. Ooh, oh, that's a good way to put it too, Big Scary. Ooh, how was your run to uh, Walgreens? Oh, Totsky. Hi. Hi. Thank you for the 420. I will resend your alert when we get out of game. Thank you so much for the 420, Totsky. Oh wait, wrong button, damn it! <laughs> there you go, Totsky. Thank you, thank you for the 420, Totsky. You wonderful human, I hope you're well. I'm excited to play games with you uh, Wednesday, Thursday, or Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, two different T-Days. Uh, Night Knight gets hit with a curse bolt, takes a lot of damage, J-Mac comes through with the hit, and uh, yes, it is that holy fervor at level seven, but there's a demonic invasion, a diva mecha explosion, J-Mac is gonna pop the in in uh, angelic armament, which eats a lot of that mecha explosion damage, Blaze goes down, Ooh, that's a lot of damage onto this great or onto this Rhaegar and Greyman actually rolls forward looking for the Gilnean cocktail. So activate to cause the next four basic attacks within 10 seconds to cleave for additional 30 damage, 30% additional damage. Passive, casting Molten Armor, which is the burr, 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 you know, because I do a lot of the folly work for this game. Uh, <laughs> is going to activate that as well for the next two basic attacks. This is this is that. That's the Molten uh, Armor right there. Did, it, it was it was almost one and one. It was almost exactly the same. Get to get the gang back together. I'm so excited. Stress roll. I got the smart and ice tea. Ooh, very nice. Now I really want iced tea, or like Arizona iced tea. I actually have a jug of it in the fridge. I should just go get some after stream. Some more sugar water, on top of the sugar water that I'm currently drinking. 20, uh, excuse me, not 20. Uh, turn in availability exists for both sides. Once again, our second turn in could be here for wait till 10. First turn in for Council of War is available. They have 76 gems in their pocket. 25 already turned in, but there's going to be a jet propulsion onto one. There's going to be a crystal agus from the Ariel J-Mac. Pops the Angelic Armament, and they are turning this fight around on the side of wait till 10. They are just shutting things down as the Angelic Armament. If there was no sidewall right here, that Angelic Armament would have killed Ender. And oh my god, is Ender living on a thread of life? Just... If this was who, not whose line is it anyways, if this was who wants to be a millionaire, this is just every lifeline being used by Ender. What's water without sugar though? Uh, water? <laughs> Bland water? You know, all right. Another, another just massive sidetrack. I was talking to my mom about this and cause I, I drink a lot of water and I fill up my, I was filling up my water bottle at their house and I was talking to them and I was just like, mom, I don't know what it is, but there's something about Tahoe water that's like better than all the others. Like, like all the water they have in Michigan, it just like, it just tastes bland, if that makes any sense. Like Tahoe water is like, it tastes slightly better. I don't know how to describe it. It is also, I have been told that like, apparently like statistically, we have like really, really good water here. Like if you look at it like on a microbial or mineral or whatever basis, like if you look at it on a very, very microscopic level apparently like our waters are like very clean very like rich in minerals or something like that so i guess it makes sense but either way arizona iced tea ew oh i love it ronan i love arizona iced tea give me that sugar water all day unless it's next to freezing cold cold water is very good uh usually lemon's the jam for me a little bit of lemon helps out a ton also lemon's really good for your stomach if you have stomach issues i know what you're saying you're like c citrus and, and uh, acidity in your stomach it's really good acidity for your stomach but what isn't good is taking a lot of damage where your hp bar goes to zero and imperius did have that happen so did ronan maybe subterranean armor the level seven no no oh my god no it's 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 just this uh I'm sorry, I'm thinking of a completely different game. Not Syrup Subterranean Armor. It's gonna be this entire Hardened Carapace build that is gonna be the reason that they live. Oh my god. Oh my god. Sorry, for some reason I still thought there was Subterranean. Uh, depends on the water source. My dad does brewing and his tap water sucks because they have really high iron even though they're filtering and softening. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know people who go and buy like 
they'll go buy a specific like distilled water. Like my dad's like that when he brews um espresso. When my dad brews espresso, he only uses distilled water to do it. Like he's he's a chemist, so he's he's oh, he's got all of his things about it. So it's it's just it's fascinating because it's not so like I never like I don't have a master's in organic chemistry like him. So like when he talks about it, I'm like, oh, it's um, you make a good point. He swears by it. He swears by it. He swears by brewing at least espresso with distilled water. He thinks it comes out better. I haven't been able to drink that, so I can't make a uh, counter argument. But he has, he has like literally bought and left distilled water here for when they make their own. Sorry, we're on tangents today, ladies and gentlemen, as the fight will continue to break out. Imperious, huge celestial charge. J-Mac is landing so many good Imperious celestial charges, as well as just these angelic armaments, which is gonna be triggered right now. J-Mac triggers the last second, goes for Night Knight, is gonna be getting the Crystal Aegis just in time. Ronin goes in with the Burrow Charge, also will be able to get the Impale, trying to walk away from the Diva Mech Explosion. Jet Propulsion from Blaze is gonna be just shy, but this is going to be top lane web weaver very far down the lane. Mid lane is in about mid position as this Asmodan's doing his best to clear things out. 290 stacks baseline, so already has that level 1 value done, meaning 25% cooldown reduction on your uh, Global of Annihilation hitting an enemy minion and double that against heroes, so 0.5. So a big minion wave plus a big stack like right here, this would be a huge cooldown reduction from Asmodan, and I believe that is the case. Ice block for the Jaina. Iceman is very far forward. Tries to razor swipe away. Ancestral healing will be used. Micro missiles come out from the Diva to slow down Iceman as there will be a Jeff Repulsion from Blaze as well. Diva will lose her mecha and she's able to get away. But that is still half an ex half a kill for the side of our wait till 10 crew as the Diva mech is 0.5 and the Diva pilot is 0.5 of a kill, of a heroic kill. My late father was a chemist. It's, it's like I've learned a lot of like just... I don't know, the, the way that he even just looks at, like, cleaning stuff. Like, when, when, when there's ratios to be mixed, he'll look at the, he'll look at the back of, like, uh, like, if it's, like, pine saw or something like that, like, to clean floor or whatever. This is just a broad example. He'll look and it says, this is the ratio, the, the bottle will say this is the ratio to use. And he'll look at it and go, no, I have a better ratio. And I swear to God, you could, you could, if you wear socks in their house, you are literally ice skating. Like, I can't wear socks in their house because it's just so slippery. Anyways, the fight continues once again through mid lane as there was a celestial charge. Cocoon onto the Jaina, demonic invasion, excuse me. Yeah, demonic invasion from the Asmodan onto this fort through mid, Imperious and... I was waiting if there's a celestial charge, but it's not even necessary. Ronin went for the uh, burrow charge and then actually set up the kill into Jaina. Nice stagger death and a lot of gems to be uh, falling on the ground. Still available turn in for the side of uh, Council of War, but wait till 10 will have their own. And this is going to be third turn in for the side of Council, or excuse me, wait till 10. Baja's dad's a hipster. Uh, he was doing it before it was cool. <laughs> this back got back from making lunch. Thank you for the. Oh, be crazy! Yeah, enjoy your gifted sub. Alrighty, so web weavers will descend. Bottom lane does have the. Uh, oh no, actually, I misread that. It's going to be turning in favor for Council of War. They did have enough. Both teams had enough, but going to be snuck, sneaked, snuckited. In for the favor for the side of uh, Council of War. What are they able to get with this? Because Web Weavers descend as far as the enemy minion wave, which is very far back in bottom. A little, that's uh, a little back in mid. And top lane is going to be probably the furthest up, which is going to be the priority for the side of Wait Till 10. Free Hipster Hipster. He was doing it before it was even considered to be cool. He was so, he was so hip to it that he didn't even know he was coming up with it. <laughs> I said that about a tattoo once and someone was like, see? And I was just like, fuck. But it was, like, before it was, like, super popular, there was a tattoo I got and then it became super popular. I was like, ugh. Wailing Arrow goes out from Sylvanas. Gonna connect onto J-Mac, who's gonna be getting the Crystal Aegis from Lady Ronin just in time. A lot of damage onto this Diva Mecha, and that is going to be, uh, no, okay. No one taking damage. Cocoon went out onto Ultimate Hook. 
Big burrow charge. That's a demonic invasion. A huge celestial charge. Ancestor healing goes out onto a nearly full Jaina, but I feel like it didn't matter who got the ancestral. Someone was going to die right there as Asmodan finishes out his baseline stack, stacking, and he also does have that total annihilation for some extra percent base damage into the enemy side. Really good dunking value right now as a dunk comes out onto Jaina. She will go down. Turn availability exists. Iceman so very low. The rushdown's there, but Ariel has a heal just in time. Diva, does she have a big shot to make anything happen? No, she's going to go down here. I like the read from Asmodan as well. Hannibal throwing the re the Globe of Annihilation into the expected retreat path of the D.Va, regardless, I think, of where she was actually going. I just like it because you kind of give her no option of escape as we're getting some dunks into bottom lane. The only issue, in my opinion, with Asmodan... Um, on a map like this in these situations is once you start dunking out into those lanes, you're missing the gem pickup. Yes, you get the experience because magic, you know, you, if you last hit something, you get the you get the experience no matter where you are, much like Ragnaros with the lava wave. But if you're dunking out into lanes where you can't get the, the globes, especially on a map, not globes, excuse me, where you can't get the gems, I feel like you sometimes hinder your team a little bit or, or handicap your team in a sense um, where they, uh, handicap's not right. You hinder your team in the availability of the gems, but right now that's not a scarce resource for the side of wait till 10. They've got a solid two level lead and they've got enough for a turn in plus a boss through top and a massively pushed up wave. This is looking healthy and good for the side of wait till 10. I'm gonna go ahead and showcase our favorite thing. Let's look at some APM. While boss plus web weavers were timed out very well through top, J Max stepping in looking for a celestial charge or just a little bit of poke onto the enemy side. Does have that Solarian Flame to get a mark onto one enemy hero. 20 talent here is still here in favor. We do have the Demonic Invasion. I think it was triggered by the Esmodan. Yeah, it's on full cooldown just now. It's five seconds off that initial. Uh, Blaze goes for the Jet Propulsion in. The Webweaver still descending into lane. Boss around 50% HP. Anubrak goes in for the Burrow Charge. Won't connect as there will be a uh, self-cleanse onto Ender. Diva Mech is going to get hit with the Cocoon. Does she have Mech Explosion? Soon, but not just yet. Crystal Aegis from the Ariel does connect onto J-Mech. And this is going to be Angelic Armament. I thought it was used. Maybe it was. Maybe uh, maybe I misread it right there. Huge celestial charge right there, and that will be Blaze going down. Boss slamming and jamming his way through everything, and the boss is going to fall soon. But the Web Weaver is here, and this core is being shredded. It's looking like game number two in our fourth best of three of the day is going to go over to the side of Wait Till Ten. GG. Well played.